Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. We have a big crafting day ahead of us, so buckle up! Okay, first of all, I have good news for you. Yesterday we did pages 3 through 6, but I forgot to count the vellum page as a page in itself. So actually, we finished through page 8. Pretty exciting, farther than you thought. Today I want to get a lot done here, so let's let's get going. Pull out your page two and we're going to be using things from there. In the upper corner you're going to find the little guy that says, if I were a fish. We're going to be using that. Go ahead and cut that out. Next, what you want to cut out are these two fish. It says number nine by it. Those two fish are going to be going in there as well. You're also going to see these uh, right here, you're going to cut them out. We're going to use them in it as well. So all the number nines we are going to be using in our page today, the next page. Cut them out and ink them up and get them ready. One other thing is on page one, there's some words that we're going to be using. Go ahead and cut them out. In particular for this page, we're going to be using the word outdoors. But there's other words that are coming up in the immediate pages. You can use these words or you can select other words that I have there. You can use whatever you like. But these are the ones that I'm going to be using. So if you want to cut them out and prep them, and then we can get going. Okay, one thing I want to point out that I did with these ones. See how there's just that little ridge down there? You can keep that on, but what I chose to do was actually cut that off so it was a nice clean cut for the ad. You can even cut these ha in half if you want. Cut each, each ad up so that you have separate parts. So there's those that I want to point out. What you want to do now is cut out a little block of um, a piece of your book page. I cut it out at two and three quarters by three inches. This gives it a nice lip around the edge. If I want it to be smaller though, I can hold it up and then just clip off a little bit more. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I am going to glue it on and then ink my edges and then cut it off just a little bit more. It really is a matter of preference if you like a little bit more of the word sticking out or if you want it to just kind of be more of just peeking out, out the little edges. And so I decided I want mine a little bit more peeking out. So all you do with that is put on like that. You can either cut it off with your cutting tool or just use a scissors if you have a good hand with a long blade and cut right along and there I have the shorter edge. So whichever way you want to do. Ink it up and then what we're going to be using next is if you want to grab your cheesecloth, both the blue and the white, we're going to use a little piece of our green painter's paper and we're going to be making a pocket now out of this. So here's the page we're going to be working on. On the other side we have the little piece that flips up and so we have that part at the top. What we want to do is disguise it a little bit, hide it on the page by bringing your distress ink and moving it around the page. You can also do the same thing by bringing your stamp and putting some words on the page as well. For the pocket now what I want to do is take this piece, I have it all ready to go, and I'm going to just Put an L shape, oops, excuse me, right there and right there. So as I do the L, and I'm just going to line it right up to the corner. For me, I wanted it just slightly up. I didn't want it, you could put it right against the edge of your book page, but I wanted just a little peak of my book page peeking out. So place that there and make sure it's nice and secure. Then what you want to do is take just a little piece of your, your blue tissue paper and we're going to place it right along the edge and then a little piece of our aqua blue type cheesecloth at the bottom. So I'm ripping up a little piece, kind of putting it down there and see how I like it. I'm going to try to make it a little bit more even. I don't have mine going clear to the bottom because my cheesecloth is there. So that's covering it enough. It kind of gives, um, brings that blue over of the water from over on this side of the page. So go ahead and put a little bit of glue down. Rub it with your finger. 
and then place your piece and make sure the glue has hit all areas. Got a little bit up here. Now put a little more glue. There we go. Okay, now for our cheesecloth. I'm just going to put, actually I can see also right below that cheesecloth I put just a little bit of the painter's paper in there just to give that a little bit extra. So I'm going to rip off a little corner of my painter's paper and I'm going to glue that to the bottom corner. So these are all the little details that uh, really are fab fabulous in a book. It's what really gives it personality. Gives the eye more things to look at and to ponder. So I'm ripping off a little piece. I don't need the whole piece. I don't need my big scissors either. I want the smaller ones. And I want it just kind of a messy look at the bottom for me. Putting in enough of a glue glob to grab a hold of that. So there you go. That should do it. So I'll give that a chance to dry. At the very bottom across the page I have outdoors. You can use whatever words that you want. I'm going to go ahead and glue that down now. So I want it just over the edge of the page. Mine kind of lines up with where the T is at. So the T so is kind of covering in between the page and the coffee dyed paper. So in the back of the book I've got this. I do want to cut it like I told you I was gonna. Okay I have these ready. One thing I want to point out is make sure if you want you can muddy up the back a little bit to make it a little bit more stress looking. Dis distressed looking. Okay, these are going to be tucked in, but one thing that I did on this one, I took just a little scrap piece of the painter's paper and I made kind of a little fan type thing out of it where I just um, made like an accordion type movement and then I fanned it out like that. So it's, it's uh, let me do that again so you can see. So just fold your paper, crease, crease, crease in a little accordion. And you can cut it off if it's too long. And then you kind of open it up and rotate it. Rotate it out so you have the fan. And it kind of reminded me of a fin. You know, like a fin from the thing, from a fish. So in these layers, what I did, I just put a little bit of glue to kind of hold those layers together. It's going to be glued to the back. So I don't need a lot of glue, but it was nice to have a little bit of glue. So I'm going to do this to the back, and so I'm going to put a bead of glue there. I don't need that full length, so I'm cutting it off. And then I'm just going to place that at the top. So now I have that extra color, that extra look sticking out. So you can see how that moves a little bit. So I could put one little dot of glue right there. I'm happy with that. So tuck that in. I didn't do anything extra with this one. You can tuck that in. I do have a blue um, page in the back. Let me see what size I have it. I just, once again, I just took a little scrap piece and then I cut these little wavy looking edges on it. So my scrap piece that I cut up is you can cut it at eight inches and then do the wave so it makes it just a little bit shorter and I have it five inches wide. So eight by five will give you a piece that you can cut up and put in your spot. All right, here's mine. I have it cut up and ready and I can tuck it in and it just brings that extra blue on over. Now, easy peasy, you take your two fussy cut fish and you have their fins sticking out. And the last thing we want to do is take a little bit more of our cheesecloth. Now on mine I really muddied it up. I really gave it a distressed look. You can do it really distressed or you can do it kind of plain. The thing when you do it distressed, it, um, 
there's a little more contrast depending on how dark you do your your I'm a fish piece there. So it's a little bit more easy to see it. So just keep that in mind as you're making yours. So I've got that ready. I'm going to put a glue line just along that edge and then a little L kind of shaped again. And I've got that there. So this page, friends, is done. We're moving on to the next page. Okay, let's work on this page right here. We want the fish. You're going to find that in the corner of your page two of your digital printouts. And this is, you're going to find that on page one. It's, it has a number 10 by it. It really should say the number 12 because technically this actually is page 12. So go ahead and get those and then we're going to get working on that. Fussy cut them and ink them up. Okay, with this page, all you do is take your glue and glue down your little piece of music. I have it cut out and then I uh, distress the edges. That goes in the down uh, your right, right side corner. The fish then, take your fish. This fish is going to show through the vellum on this page, which is lovely. I just placed it about there. There's not a bad spot or a right or a wrong for this. It's just going to show through. It just makes it fun. So that page is done, except for now we're going to work on this little fish. This little fish is found on page two, um, towards the top, I believe. Go ahead and cut him out, and we're going to work on him. Cut him out, ink him up. Okay, once you have your fish cut out and inked up, what I want you to do is grab a piece of your craft paper, the one that's a little bit more on the heavier side rather than the than a, a softer, less stiff, less body, less weight to it. Because this is what we're going to be creating, that hinge that flips, that the, creates this flip for your fish. So take your fish, glue them on, and then you're going to fussy cut around him. Her, whatever. And so you want a little ledge. Don't cut it too close. You don't have to do it too far away. About an eighth of an inch or something. But cut along that so that you have it a little bit more body for your fish. And then we're going to make the hinge. Okay, what you want to do at this point is take your fish and position him on the front of your paper. This one's upside down. Position him on the front of your paper and get him at an angle that you would like him. He's going to go right against the fin there. So once you have an angle that you like him, go ahead and put a crease in your fin. You want the crease to be above the fin line and whatever, wherever that's at, that's good. If you want him angling more more parallel to the top and bottom of the page, that's great. If you want them diving down a little bit more like that, that's great. However you want them, just glue him the back part of the tail, place glue on it, turn your page over, and you're going to glue it to this part of the page. So right there, you're going to glue him. So I'm not going to glue this one. I did that one. What happened was I taped it, but I turned it off instead of taped it. So a little, a little mistake there. So I, I've got him. I've got him all glued up. I would put him on this page in the angle that I want him. I have a crease in my tail already, and I'm going to turn it and secure it to the back side of the paper so that it looks like this, and then hold it in place to make sure that it gets nice and secure. And then we are done with that page. We have an awesome page just like that with the fish that flips over. He will stay down a little bit more once the book has been closed and it's had a little time to press. So just know that. Go ahead and turn the page and we're going to be starting the next page. What we're going to do on this page like we do on all others, we've inked up the page a little bit and add a little bit of uh, word text if you want to do that. What you want to do at this point is pull out your paper and we're going to be cutting some of the fish out that we're going to be placing down below. That's going to be on your page two towards the bottom right there. These three fish with the number 13 all by them are the fish that we're going to use. Cut them out and we're going to place them down below. Okay, I have all of these inked and ready to go and then they are tiny little critters, aren't they? This black one I had on the bottom right here. This cutie patootie tiny little fish towards the top 
and then this one towards the bottom. Now if you ended up waving this or cutting it shorter, just position your fish however works best for you. But that's basically how we do it. So let's go ahead and glue them on. Now that I have my fish now that I have my fish place there and I can see them through the, my vellum, I'm going to take a little bead of my glue and place it along the edge. And that's going to secure my page to the coffee dyed paper. It's going to have a real blurry look if you're using the vellum. And that's where this string comes in line. In in line <laughs> in place. So you want to cut a strand of your cotton thread, yarn, whatever it is, and it's going to be glued right along the edge of the page to uh, to just kind of cover up that little area. If you want to, what I also did on my page was put a little bit of the cheesecloth right below it as well. So I'm going to prep some cheesecloth and get that ready so I can place that below my piece. All right, I'm going to put a bead of glue along there and place my cheesecloth. Then I'm going to take my string and place a bead along the entire edge and place that there. And I did cut it pretty close, but just a little bit longer. Just slightly. Well, maybe once it gets on there, it squishes up. If yours is a little bit longer, don't worry about it. Just trim off the edges. So I'm going to keep that there. So one thing is, if you don't, if you want to be able to see your fin, maybe don't use all this stuff right there. Maybe go closer. I didn't mind that though. I can still kind of see my, my fin, and the, but yet I have that other area covered up. At this point, you can take your friendship word or whatever you want to use and place it here. So this friendship word goes with the other side of the page, the people fishing on the pier. I have to tell you, I did notice that I actually put my signature in with the wrong pages and I had to actually cut my sig signature apart and re- bind it so that the pier side was on the outside. If you did that too, don't worry about it. It's fine with this big fish on the outside and, the, and these guys in the inside. So I just changed it because that's how I had it in my initial book and my initial documentation. Had I not been doing this, I would have kept it the other way. So just know that with anything that you do, it can be just quite awesome. Um, if you make a mistake in just keeping it the way it is. Now what we're going to be doing is working on this page and what we're going to be doing there is putting just a little piece of cheesecloth right along that edge. So grab your cheesecloth, ink it up, and we'll glue it down. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and start the next piece. You're going to want to cut out um, the two pictures that are left on your page, page number two, right here. Cut them out, and we're going to be mounting them not on a, a book page, but on a piece of um, craft paper. So let's do that. Okay, you want to cut two pieces of craft paper that are going to frame, if you will, these two pictures. This one, for this picture, I cut it at two and a half by three and a half. So two and a half by three and a half. And it fits about like that. For this one, I decided I wanted to cut a little bit off of this edge to focus in on the picture a little bit more. So I cut this one at two and a half and three and one quarter. So go ahead and cut those out ink them up and then glue them on. Now you want to take the two circles from your page one and we're going to punch those out. They're one inch circles so you can use your punching tool and just put it right over it and punch it out. 
And then we're going to put these on the edges of our pictures. So punch them out, ink them up, and then also um, punch out an extra piece of the same thing out of your craft paper. So I have my two circles here. What I'm going to do is take my picture and I'm going to glue one of the circles to the very top by the face of this gentleman. I'm going to glue it nice and close so it's about halfway in the middle of the circle. So glue half of your circle. Find a comfortable spot near the face. Actually mine goes over a little bit more on this one. I have a little bit more room. You want to leave about half of it out because that's what you're going to use to pull in and out your picture. Take your other piece, glue the whole section and place that over it. That's going to give it just a little bit more strength as you're using it. There you go. So now you have a nice pull out for your picture. So for this other one I did it a little bit differently. I didn't use um, I, I didn't use the the craft paper, excuse me, I didn't use the craft paper on the whole thing. Go ahead and glue your piece. I need to make sure I have it at the bottom. Make sure you have the proper side up and then put it down here about halfway over. I'm not going to use the, the craft circle. I did cut it out. I'm not going to use the craft circle, but what I am going to do is grab a little twine or a little bit of this kind of stuff. Something, something to put there to add a little interest in a little body. And to, but it'll also give it just a little bit more structure. So see, by putting that there, I just get a little bit more interest. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit hairy, so I'm going to cut it down a tad. And I'm going to let that dry, and that's how I'm going to have that one. Okay, you want to cut out the word success. You're going to find that on page two, and go ahead and ink it up and glue it on your picture. After that, we're going to be working on the fish page, the large fish page. Go ahead and glue right along the edges some of your aqua colored, teal colored, whatever that is, sea foam colored um, cheesecloth along the edges. Also you can take the word thrill, I believe that was on page one, and you can put that in the bottom por portion of your page, and that page is done. Okay, we have all these pages done, and now I'm going to go ahead and just take my pictures that we did and put them in the pockets. If your pocket glue is going beyond the edge, you might have to work at it a little bit, so just keep that in mind. And take this one, put it in, and boom, those are done. We're now over on this page. This page here we're going to do basically like the page that we did earlier, right over here. The first thing you, that you want to do is put some ink and some words on your page. Have these cut and inked up. One's going to go towards the top and the other one's going to go in the other direction towards the bottom of the page. So I'm going to go ahead and glue those on. Once those are glued on, just like on the other page, I'm going to take just a little tiny bead of glue, put it on the edge so that it can grab a hold of that vellum page. Just like the other page, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my string. You can either place your string down first, your cotton twine, your cotton your cotton bit and you can either place it down first or you can place a little bit of your um, cheesecloth down first if you'd like some cheesecloth. Either way you go. This one I'm going to put it on top. The other page I put it on the bottom. Go ahead and make a bead. Place your cotton or twine. If you want to use twine there that's just fine too. And then go ahead and add um, cheesecloth. So I'm going to place my glue just right on top of my twine this time rather than down on the paper and scooch it around. I have a little bit extra there but I'm going to keep it there. The word determination goes in. I have the D towards the bottom and I'm just going to place it over that extra bit of um, cheesecloth. I'm going to add a little bit more 
of my distress to the outside, adding a little bit more color and a little bit more definition. Okay, got my word. Oops, I want my D at the bottom. You can put your D at the bottom or at the top. Either way is fine. But I just have it at the bottom. So there we go. Oh, I like that too. A little bit going over the top of it. So now that page is done. We are just like rolling through this book. Okay, let's go on. So this is a fun little part of the book where I actually used a, a fishing product in there. It's called like a think a swivel or something like that. If you have a swivel, grab your swivel. If you don't, you can put it just on a piece of line, a line or um, a piece of cotton thread, anything like that. What you want to do, you want to cut out your fish. The fish is found at the bottom of page two, that darling little little fish right there. Cut them out and then also mount him on some of the craft cardstock just like we did on some of the other fish. So go ahead and do that and let's get back together. Here's the little swivel piece that I'm going to use on my fish. I'm going to take the loop that's at the top and take a piece of my cotton twine or take some twine and feed that through. That's what I'm going to be gluing to the top of it. I'm going to put a bead of glue on it and just kind of work it together so that the cotton glues to itself and creates a hoop or a, as if it's one piece before I glue it to the page. So I'm going to let that dry and then glue it to the page. In the meantime what I want to do is take this loop and I'm going to hot glue it to the back of my fish right there. While my hot glue gun is heating out up I realize I missed a little spot down here. What I want to do is put a bead of glue along the picture portion and place some of the cheesecloth along that spot too. Just creating a little bit more interest and um, a, just a, not a boundary, but a, I'm not sure which word I want, but it kind of softens the horizon, it softens the line between those two pieces. So, if we move on over, see I had it on that side, and so I put it on that side as well. It's just a nice little detail. Okay, let's get to the hot glue. On my fish, I'm going to put just a puddle of glue right there. My glue is not real hot, so I'll be able to touch it. If your glue is real hot at the moment, though, don't touch it. But mine, mine's a nice temperature that I'm able to do that, so it just kind of squishes around. And so now that is ready to go. Let me put this back up. So on this page right here, I have them just close to the top so that it's not touching the very bottom. So kind of position your fish to see where you want them. I kind of like it right here. So see there's that fish. So the, the top of this fish will be peeking out and this will be going over it. So I'm going to put it right there and about that high. So I'm going to put a bead of glue. A nice, a generous bead of glue for this one and I'm going to glue it down and let it dry. Okay, there you go. Now this page is done too. Let's go ahead and move on to the next page. For this back side of the page, you're going to prep it like the others. You're, you are going to put some ink on it and put the letters there if you want the letters. So go ahead and do that. Okay, once you have this page all inked up and put a little words on it, you can glue down your piece of wording, your little music, that you got off the page. That can be glued on just like all the other pages. Take this photo, cut it out, have it inked up, and then we're going to be using a hinge like we have in some previous ones. Cut out a hinge piece of paper that is one inch and a little bit longer than this size of the picture. Once you have it cut out, go ahead and ink it up. That's a dark ink that I have right there. It'll be okay though because it'll be right in the hinge. No worry. Okay, I'm going to make the hinge. All I do is fold it in half. And then I'm going to take, I fell. That's how it's going to open up. I'm going to take this top portion, put glue on it, and then place this picture on the top. Like that. Press it down and let it dry. Once it's dry, go ahead and take your scissors, snizzards, and clip it off. 
and there you go. You have your hinge. So take your hinge and you can glue it to your page. Get those edges nice. And just glue it to the top. I glued mine a little off-centered. I didn't want it completely in the center. At this point we're going to take some of our tissue paper and we're just going to kind of bring color into the photo without actually coloring it. We have a little piece of the blue on the corner right there so I'm going to put some glue down place it down and just kind of rip it off until I get it a shape that I want make sure I have enough glue Oops, like that I also have a little bit just kind of peeking at the top of it so rip off a small portion of it get a look that you want to go oh this one's nice go next to the fish and then place glue on your picture smooth it out and then place your tissue down on it what I also want you to do is flip your picture up and on the back side place a strip along the edge of the picture so go ahead and you can have it smooth looking but I liked it actually kind of a roughed up look like creating a little bit more motion a little bit more movement so it's going to go on the back side of my picture like that. So I'm going to put glue on the back, smooth it out, and just place this along the edge. Like that. On the other side, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a green strip of fabric. If you have some kind of fabric, that's great. If you don't have it, just go ahead and use more of your tissue on the other side. So let me grab my green fabric and I'll show you what, it, what I did. Here's a strip of just like a little, little green piece. And what I want it to do, I want to glue it to the edge so it sticks out coming from the top and over to the bottom. I'm going to kind of snip this and then rip the rest of it so I have kind of a rough edge. It just creates another, another texture and another feel. So I can hot glue this or I can go ahead and just use my wet glue if you have a good wet glue. I'm going to use wet glue right now. I'm going to put it on that edge. And I'm going to have it just positioned peeking out and down the edge. Kind of reminds me of like a piece of clothing from during that time period. Like that. Okay. Now what I want to do is put a word at the top, uh, excuse me, not the top, but at the bottom right there. You can pick whatever word that you would like to use. Okay, and now we can move on to the next page. For the next page we have the vellum, and we do add just a little bit to this page. We're going to add um, a little bit of the baker, not the bakers, we're going to be adding a little bit of cheesecloth along the edge. Go ahead and get your cheesecloth, put a little distress ink on it to give it a little variation of coloring, and then we're going to glue that along the edge like that. What we're also going to do is make a little tab. So you can use ribbon, you can use cardstock, you can use whatever you want. It's about a one inch by um, maybe two inches, uh, a little bit smaller. So let me see what size I have here. I have a one inch by one and a half inch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this over at the top here and I want to make a tab out of it. I want to make sure that it's not going to go beyond the edge of my cover. So I'm going to hold it in far enough and then I'm going to just take a stapler and I'm going to staple it into place. I have a hand staple I'm going to use. Okay, and that's ready to go. Now I'm going to take my baker's twine and I'm going to lay that along the edge here and glue it. So I don't want to move my glue around too much, so I'm going to place the glue 
and then I'm going to place my cheesecloth right along the edge like that and make sure you give it plenty of time to dry before you try to move it and turn the page actually looking right here you don't have to do this but I think it would be nice to have just a little touch of cheesecloth in that corner I didn't do that in my original but just looking at the page right now I think that would be fun so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it put just a touch just right by that music to peek out and add a little bit more interest I think it kinda brings a little bit more balance seeing the cheesecloth on that side of the page and then just a hint of it it's like your, your eye reads across the page a little bit more freely. I think it would look good with a little bit of this aqua also. So I'm going to place a little bit of that on the top to catch the colors from in the paper and even bring in the, some of the coloring from over here. And I'm going to put it on the other side as well, but I'll do that when we get to the next page. So, so for the back side of this page, all we want to do is take some cheesecloth and just like the other side, place it over this tab. So I've got some cheesecloth right there, a little bit of glue, and what it does, it covers up the staple mark. There you go, that's done. So on this page, what I want you to do is prep it like we have the other page. Go ahead and put the ink and put any word stamping that you want done on it. I'm going to show you a little trick too that you can use. So I used a word stamp here and I have it darker than I want it. What you can do is take some just regular acrylic paint. This is one that I got from the dollar store so it's very inexpensive. And you can take that and you can kind of rub it over the surface just to create kind of a rustic look. But it covers up a little bit of the darkness of your inking if you did too much inking on it. So just create a, like, you know, uh, some drywalling or things like that that have the markings or old vintage houses in France. You know, it's just kind of a distressed look that you do, that you can do on it. So there you go, an extra little tip. Glad I made that little, little tiny air. So once you have that done, we're going to be adding fish to the page like this. This is just a scrap piece of book paper. It's about a quarter, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. It's just a tiny little piece, and it's about three inches, I'm guessing. Two and a half, two and three quarters. Um, and then your word patience. I think that was on the front page of uh, page one. Go ahead and get that, and then grab your fish. Your fish is going to be right on page three. It's that little crater right there that has the number 22 by it. Go ahead and cut them out and ink them up and we'll get going. Okay, for this page you're going to want a little scrap of your green painter's paper and you're also going to want a little piece of your blue tissue paper. We're going to kind of create a little sea bottom, if you will. First, what we're going to do is create your your like seaweed or whatever that would be. The high, the longest part I have there is about two inches up. So just cut your piece around two inches and I have it about a little over two inches wide. So cut a piece and then we're going to freehand, freehand that movement, that, that waterway. Something like that. So what I did, I just kind of went in and make, made little curved cuts with peaks. Like, like it would be a peak of a plant growing to a point. Something that the fish could then hide within. So if you cut it down like this, it's a little bit more easier just cutting in one direction rather than going to the bottom there and then cutting up. Does that make sense? And then you're going to hide your fish in that little area. So there's my my uh, my little seaweed. Here's my fish. Oops, I did not get him distressed. Well, the fish might be distressed in the weed, right? Or maybe he's hiding. He likes it there. So I'm going to glue the bottom of my seaweed down just to secure it so that I can work with it. It doesn't take a lot of glue because this 
paper is so porous. So I have that there, and then I'm going to take my fish and kind of get an idea of where I want them placed. I'm going to kind of put them right in the middle right there, coming out from that one. So I'm going to glue these other two sides down, and then I'm going to glue the other one at the end when I have the fish tucked in and ready with it. Okay, there's two of them. Okay, there's that. So here's the one with my fish. I'm going to put, put glue on my fish first and I'm going to put him down here and position him where I want him. A little farther back. About there is where I want him. Then I'm going to take glue and put it on my grass or my seaweed or whatever it is and it's going to go over the fish and now that's secure. Once that's in place you can grab your tissue paper and start making some water. It's just freehand once again and you can put it in several layers. So like I'll put this layer, this is one piece, I'm going to smooth it out with my finger and I'm going to place my tissue over the top. It's kind of like um, decoupage in a way. Well, maybe it is decoupage. Then I'm going to take it from the other side, do another glue swatch. Swatch. Place my piece down, and there I go. And then I can either leave it along the edge or I can go ahead and pull along um, the edges of my water. So I have my water going on there, and the last thing that I want to do is once again take some cheesecloth, give it a little bit of ink, and then place it over the top of it. It just creates a nice little movement once again. So when I put this cheesecloth on here, I try to bunch it up a little bit and then I'll cut off this portion here. It's a little bit longer than I want it. Almost feels like um, he's at risk of being caught. Okay, now moving on, I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of a, a book page. I've got a piece cut and I'm just going to kind of hold it up and see how long that I want it. So I think I want it about there. I'm going to distress it. and then I'm going to place it on the corner of the page. It's just something a little bit interesting and something a little bit different than all the other things and it causes your eye to move down towards the fish at the bottom there. Once I have that I'm going to grab my word patience and I'm going to place that there. Patience is at the top of page one. I'm going to glue it close to the top with the words moving down directing your eye towards the fish. So I don't have it at the very top, but I have it close to the top. Once you have that done, you are done with this page and we're on to the next. Okay, go ahead, ink and put words on your page. There's three things you're going to need for this page. You're going to need the fish, the picture of the two men fishing in the river, fly fishing I believe it is. You're going to need the fishing reel and you, that's on page three. And then you're also going to need the word freedom. Okay, I've got these three ready. This is all inked up and ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and place it on the bottom of the page right away so it doesn't get lost anywhere. So I'm going to ink it up and place it in that bottom corner and that's ready to go. For this one, what I want to do, I want to cut out a piece of your craft paper. This one we're going to make a turn going like this and we use a book page. So cut out a piece of book page um, that's a little bit bigger than this craft paper. One inch wide and at least about four inches long and then we'll trim it. So four inches by one inches I need you to cut out a piece of your book paper and then I need you to cut out a piece of craft paper that is three by three and three quarters and ink it up. Okay, once you have your paper ready, go ahead and glue it on. Okay, we're going to take our one inch strip, fold it in half, and we're going to make our hinge out of it. Go ahead and glue this part of the hinge. 
and we're going to place our picture on top of it. I need to glue a little more. Okay, make sure it's up to the edge. And now I have a nice hinge. I don't have any glue right there so I can cut it right now. If I did have glue I'd wait and make sure that it's actually dried. This hinge is going to go right on the edge of the page right there. So you can go ahead and once you feel like it's nice and secure onto your front picture, glue up your back, the back of your hinge and place it on your paper. It's a, I have mine about a quarter of an inch down, down from the top of the page and I have it right on the very edge this time. And when you open it up, it looks like that. Next you want to make another hinge, one inch by just a little bit longer than this. And we're going to make another hinge and we're going to put this on next. Okay, I, I have my hinge ready. I'm going to go ahead and glue it on. This is the front part. And it's going to open that way. So I'm going to glue my fishing reel box cover to the outside there. Press it down. Make sure you don't have glue on it and then go ahead and clip that area that you don't need. So this I'm gluing right towards the top section right there. Once again, probably about a quarter inch down from the top of the page. Glue it up. Place it down, and there you have your next element. There you go. Okay, a few little details that we want to do. What I did, I had a little piece of vellum left. You can use your blue tissue paper as well, but if you have any piece of your vellum left, if you have any scrap, I just put that on the bottom. I don't have any scrap right now, so I'm going to put my tissue paper at, at the bottom. Let's see. I'm gonna rip it. And, and just a little note, the tissue paper does have directions. Like if I try to rip it this way, it'll rip differently than if I rip it in the other direction. So if you're having trouble ripping your paper, just keep in mind that that might be what the problem is and try ripping it in the other direction. Okay, I'm going to place a bead of glue at the bottom of my page and I'm going to place my tissue along the bottom. And there it is peeking out. Okay. Then I have a little bit of my cheesecloth. I'm going to lay some glue down because I also want that at the bottom of this page. And I'm going to lay that in there like this. Okay. Make sure I have enough glue and let that dry and be secure. And then, if you want, just a touch of that also right on this side of the page as well, of the cheesecloth. So here's a little cheesecloth. I'm going to put some glue, and I'm going to just kind of place it right there. It's just a nice element. It's, the, the details just make such a fun difference in your book. So go ahead and let that dry, and then we will be moving on to the next page. For this next page, I actually used a real hook. I bought a hook from the store that had um, the fishing line already attached to it. What I did to my hook, though, to make it safe to have in the book, I took my glue and I just placed um, puddles of glue on that hook. So I'm just going to place puddles of glue so that there isn't any more of that fish hook that is actually touchable. So, so it'll be nice and safe. It's all covered up. I thought about that because it, it came in just a little baggy, you know, and like I thought, well, if it, it's safe in that baggy, I can certainly make it safer in the book. It makes it kind of look like maybe um, something's on the hook anyway, like a like some kind of, you know, bait or something. I don't know. Okay, so I have that hook ready, 
And then what I want to do, I want to position it. Now, the fishing line really has a mind of its own, so you have to kind of work with that. So kind of find a place that you like it. So like this is moving, so even though this... I'm going, to put, I'm going to glue it over here, even though that's not straight down. But, but that's how the line wants to move, and it's not going to change. So I'm going to put a bit of hot glue down, and I'm going to place the fishing line right there and let it, let it get secure. Once it's ready, go ahead and clip off that line, and then we're going to create the top part that kind of covers that area. You can actually keep it kind of covered like this. Let me show you what I did. You can either do that or you can do a little bit less. I put a little piece of um, vellum right there. I'm going to use just blue um, tissue paper on mine right there. And then I covered it with a little bit of the cheesecloth again. As you can see, I kept on bringing those colors and those textures just throughout the book. It just it creates a, a unified feeling for the book. So when you glue onto your vellum, you have to just kind of be careful because it is going to kind of, depending on what printer you have, it'll, it'll um, disturb the ink of the vellum. So I have my um, tissue paper down and now I'm going to add just a little bit of the the netting. For the netting I didn't want to add extra ink to it. I wanted it more of a white look. Kind of like white water, you know, as if it... I don't know. That That's where my, my mind went. So, so I didn't actually add any additional inking to it. So there you go. I'm going to step away so I don't get a bunch of glue on my vellum and I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and that page is done. Actually I'm going to trim right there. Put a little glue there and now that page is done. While that's drying we're going to go ahead and cut out the fish for the next page. You're going to find these fish, the fish for the next page, on the top of page four, it's three, these three fish right there. And then you're going to cut out the word biting if you want to use that. Okay, once you have your fish cut out, you're going to cut out a piece of book page. It's going to be three and a quarter by four and a quarter. So you're going to basically want it just to fit this page right here, which is the back side of your paper bag. If you use something else or a different size bag, just make it to fit that size of the bag. You can have it exactly up to the edges, or you can leave a little bit of peaking of the, of the actual paper bag through it. I have mine cut right here, and I'm going to place it on my bag. Once you have it on your bag, go ahead and grab your fish. So at the top, I put that little puffy looking fish. In the middle, I put that teeny tiny fish kind of going just parallel with the page. This one I did angling a little bit up, kind of right there. And then at the bottom, I put this critter and I put him just kind of parallel as well. And I put the word biting right there. So let's go ahead and glue all that on. I'm going to put the little biting on first just to get it out of the way and make sure that I have room for my fish. I have it um, inked up, glued up, and oops, I actually I want it going this way with the G at the bottom glued on the page. Now I'm going to take that bottom fish and place him, put glue around. I have them parallel with the bottom of the page and kind of towards the middle. And there's no wrong place with any of this. It's just kind of fish that you're going to be seeing through your vellum, which is pretty awesome. I love the look that it creates. Okay, I have my little crater fish. I have him kind of parallel and going closer to this edge of the page. And then lastly, I have my puffy looking fish. I'm sure he has a real name other than puffy looking fish, but I like that name. I've got him glued up and I'm going to put him 
kind of in the middle of the page and angling up a little bit. So there you go, and that page is done too. So let's go ahead and turn the page. Make sure your glue is dry so it doesn't touch the vellum. And then we're going to be working on the back side. For the back side of the page, you want to go ahead and cut out the gentleman. We're going to be using a little bit piece of book page, so get that ready and cut out a word. This particular word I have right there is skill. On the inside, I have this fish. You're going to find him at the bottom of page four. So go ahead and cut those out and get them ready. So I'm going to mount him on a piece of craft paper. Go ahead and cut a piece out that's about two and a quarter and at least two and a half inches long. I'm going to rip the edge of it. So if it's a little bit longer than two and a half, that's just fine. Just make sure it's at least two and a quarter. You can go ahead and just place your picture on there and you can kind of see what you need. If you don't want to measure it, you can just hold it up to your cutting board and cut right there. So I inked up the edges of that page and now I'm going to glue him down. He's now glued down to the page and all I'm going to do is create a ripped rugged edge. Once I have that edge I can go ahead and take my ink and just go along the edge right there. You can do the back and we're ready to then secure it on with a piece of the book page. With the book page all I did was take a scrap of the page that I had ripped from the end. The important thing that is that you want it to be about this one's just a little over two inches. It's about two and a quarter inches. And the, the height of it needs to be, I have it two and three quarters. So let's go ahead and cut that and prep it. So for this one, what I did, I just took a book page. I ripped it out. And then I'm actually using this rough edge of the page for that part of the book. So if you face it like that, those are the words in that direction. So I'm going to measure coming from here to over there. So, so let's say right about there. And I'm going to cut from measuring there to there. I'm going to cut this one at two and a half inches at my farthest point. So I don't really want this top part here, so I'm going to cut there and then measure the rest of the distance down. And that distance, once again, for those that didn't write it down, and remember, which was me right now, is two and a half inches. When I turn this page over, I saw that it actually has a fair amount of white page there. I can decide whether I want to use that or not. don't want to use that. To get around it, what I can do is just take my stamp and stamp some words at the bottom. So I think I'm going to do that rather than cut another piece. So I didn't want it to be legible, so for this particular one I did a couple different layers and I turned the stamp upside down and stamped over it again. Once I do have that cut, ready to go, ink it up nicely and give it just a nice old distressed look. You don't want it to look like a fresh, 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 I can say it. You don't want it to look like a fresh page out of the book. You want it to look something old, worn out, discarded, just something, something that fishermen would have. Okay, once you have that, let's move on to the next part. What I did was I just lightly turned the edge. I didn't want a whole big edge going out, so I turned like maybe a quarter of an inch. So you can just kind of eyeball that and, and do that by hand. That's just all the amount there is, and that's on that side. I did that because I wanted the fish to be on this page, and I wanted it to be by the edge of the paper bag, and I didn't want um, the edge of this paper, of this book, to get in his way too much. You can do it however you like, though. That's just how I did it. So I've got my page ready and I can now glue it on there. So once again I have it about a quarter of an inch from the top. Got it all glued up. I'm going to place it right along the, this edge of my book and secure it. So I do want to hold it in place or put some clips on it to make sure that it stays secure. Because this is a paper bag, it has a little bit more movement to the page, so you just have to watch it a little bit more closely, I think, than if it were a flat piece of paper. So it's drying nicely like this. 
and so I'll be able to move on. In the meantime, I'm going to place this on my page. I can go ahead and glue it while the rest of it's drying. So I think I'm going to glue my book page part right from there, going over and up to there. And glue that up, and that is where my picture is going to be placed. It's about a quarter of an inch, I would say, on each side of the picture. I just basically want it to have similar, a similar distance all the way around the picture. And so now my picture goes into the page like that. That can dry, and while that's doing, I'm going to prep this page like I have every other page. I'm going to take my ink, I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to take another, like my Word um, stamp, and I'm going to stamp it up. If you want to, you can even go along the edges a little bit more to create a little bit more distinction, if you will. Now that I have that prepped, what I want to do is grab my fish, and he's going to go right here. If you want to add a line for him, that's a little bright right there, that tail. I just want to dull it up. If you want to add a little fish line, a little piece of um, twine, my cotton thread was too big, and um, the twine was too big also. This was something that I had, I just unwound it. You could probably even do that with your cotton thread so that I would have a smaller piece for this particular fish. And I'm gonna go ahead, well, let me see. I want him to be there. So decide how far down that you want him. If you want him completely hidden underneath so it's a surprise when they open, make sure that you have it above that bottom line of this page right here. And that's what I want to do. So this is where I'm going to place him. I'm going to put my line right there and this here. So that's going to hold it. Now I'm going to glue my darling fish up and I'm going to place him down hidden so it'll be a wonderful surprise right behind this piece. Okay, I can clip this off and there you go. And that page is done. Oh, wait, hold, hold the phone, Jones. I need to put skill right here. So skill actually is going to go on this part. I have a shorter part here than I did on this one, actually. When I, when I look on this one, I moved the picture farther over so I could put skill right there. But that's not a problem. I can go with the flow and just create something else. So if I want, I can put still the picture going up in that direction, which I kind of like. Or I can have it breaking the, the edge right there or going on the bottom. I kind of like it still going up because it, it um, creates the same lines as the fish that are hanging in his hands. So I'm going to glue that up. I'm going to place that, let's see, I think I want the S at the top going down. So I have skill in there too. Okay, so this next page is really easy peasy. What we want to do for the next page is cut out some of our things. We have um, this ad. We have the guy that's fishing right along the rocks, and we have this gentleman right here. Go ahead and find these three pictures and cut them out. Okay, I have this one all inked up. Now I would want, what I want to do is take a word. I'm going to take the word pride, which I had just a second ago. Here it is. I'm going to take the word pride, and I'm going to put pride on the top corner. I have that going up and down with a P towards the top going in the same direction as the fish that it's hanging by. So there's the word pride. That one's done and I can tuck it in my awesome pocket. Next I'm going to do dinner. And dinner I'm putting on this picture right here. These are on page four by the way of your printout. The D's towards the top. Go ahead and put it on going down and you have that one done and you can tuck it in. And this one doesn't have a word, so you can just tuck that in. So you put it in like that, and there you go. 
Uh, now we did put the button on already, I believe, but we haven't added the little bit of, um, or did we? Anyway, this needs to have just a little bit of, uh, what is that, golly? Cheesecloth. Cheesecloth. I put it in the wrong book. We didn't add the cheesecloth because, see, it's right there. So go ahead and little, add a little cheesecloth if you'd like it right there. I have a smidgen right here that I am going to add. I don't want to add too much, but I want to add just a little bit of interest in that spot. So for this one, I'm just going to grab my glue gun. Oh, it's not, not coming out. I got this glue gun, and it only stay on for 30 minutes, and then it turns off. I got that for a safety purpose, and apparently it's working. Okay. Uh, maybe a little bit more glue. Got that secured. Got that nice little addition. Actually, too, on this side right here, I can put a little bit more of cheesecloth right to the side of where it says skill. So these details are fun, but it, you know they're they are details, and you got to notice them. But they it just adds such great interest to the page. There you go. We're going to move on to the next page now. So for this page, I cut out that big, awesome pit fish. He's on page five, and I put just a little bit of twine, a little bit of interest down there. Also, I prepped the page. I did a little bit of inking and a little bit of word stamping. So let's get that done. So for this big, lovely prize fish, I want to get a nice amount of glue on him. Not a nice amount, just a normal amount. Even though he looks big, he's, it's not like he's heavy or anything. And I'm just going to place him at the top here like that. I have him right at the bottom of my zigzag. I don't have anything connecting him like I have the other ones. I didn't think it was really necessary. He goes right there. So then take a little bit. You can use um, twine. You can use whatever you want. But you want some movement at the bottom of your page. I have a little bit of the blue as well as just the plain. And I'm going to place that down there. It's kind of the artistic part. Okay, and then we're going to move on to this page. So for this page, we're going to cut out the sleeping guy, the hard-working sleeping guy. Cut him out. Also cut out the words dream, and there's a few other words we're going to be going. Go ahead and get, get that ready, though, and we're going to move on. So I want you to cut a piece of craft paper that we're going to mount our picture on once we have it all distressed and ready. It's going to be two and... It's going to be two and a half by three and three quarters. So go ahead and cut that out and get it inked up. Okay, once once you have that cut out and inked up, go ahead and place your picture on top of your matte paper cardstock. Get the edges kind of evened up, and this is going to become your pocket that we're going to be using on our last page. For the pocket we're going to glue a, in a U shape but make sure you have some little scrap pieces ready so you can put them under to make sure that you're going to have space to tuck things in without it being all stressed out. So go ahead and grab your glue, put it in a U, and then place it on the bottom of your page. I placed it maybe an eighth of an inch um, along the edge there and gave it a little bit more space in by the spine. So I've got that glued down now. I want to tuck my pieces in and hold my glued edges down to make sure they get secure. Once you know they're secure, you can go ahead and start working on the outside a little bit more. Here's my word dream. I hadn't... Uh, I hadn't distressed it yet. I'm going to go ahead and place it on the picture at this time. A little glue on the back. It goes over the edge towards the top. It goes by our dreaming beauty there. Okay, inside our pocket you want to find a few other things. This picture of the guy talking about the fish that he caught and then you also want to find the blue 
words and then also the fish that go with it to cut out. Go ahead and find those and we'll work on that. I also chose to take this picture and just cut it off a little bit more closer to the end of that railing. I didn't feel like I needed it to be quite, quite that long. Once you have them, do the same stuff. Ink them up and prepare them. We're going to be um, putting the fish on the back side like that. So all your fish will be on that last page there. Go ahead and cut them out, fussy cut them, and um, ink them up. So I have my two pieces that are, are going to have the fish coming out. So, so basically what we're doing, we're just making it so you have the catch of the day. You just want the fins and the faces sticking out. So on this one I had the pointy one sticking out. I had this part sticking out here. Um, let's see what else. We've got... It, they really can just be anything in anywhere. Put it. Oh, that looks nice right there. That's perfect with that one. This over here. So, however, you can take whatever fish are left. Um, this was a piece of fish that I had left from earlier that I cut off in one of the first places, and I can put that. I can put that somewhere in here. I think I'll put it right by this one. Because it, the other side isn't going to be important. You're not really going to see it. So arrange them however you like. And know that you can actually, like this one, cut it in half. And have it sticking out like here. Or have the head sticking out. Actually, I think I like the head sticking out out there. And tail sticking out. Re arrange them basically, whatever and however you see fit. Just make sure that it's something that's going to fit in this pocket at the end. So storage is on page four, if I haven't mentioned that already. So go ahead and cut that out. As I was making all of the fish here, getting them in place, I was thinking, it's kind of like making a little fish bouquet, you know. So this is going to go right along this picture, right in that big white area of the sky. Whoops. Mine's getting a little crooked. A little crooked. Alright. There's that. So now on the back side we can do a few things. You can leave it just that way if you want. But you can add the little part that says it was this big. I think that was on page one, but you can grab that and put that on there also if you want. What you can also do to write on that, you can add an extra piece of paper and go over the area where the fish is. So it, this would be cut off. Why don't I just show you? So you're going to cut a piece of paper just the size of that fish area so that you have a nice smooth area that you can write on like that. Once you have that done, you can go over to your page, pull out the little placeholders, and then tuck your awesome fish stories in there. Doesn't that just look awesome? Here's this one. You can do the same on the back if you'd like on that one. Go ahead and cover that up and then you can place that in there, in there as well. It can go in the front or in the back. Um, whichever way that you like it best. If you want the blue just kind of peeking out like that. Either way, it's just fun. It's just plain old fun. So, I think I have everything here. Let me take, let me take a look to see if there was some little... Oh, okay. One little thing here. We can add right up here once again um, a little bit more of the cheesecloth. Basically, there's a little cheesecloth on every page probably. It just it creates um, a continuity within the book, creates the same movement and it just creates a unity within the book. So so you'll see a lot of that just moving all the way through. Up in this corner also we're gonna put a little bit of cheesecloth and then a button like that. It's just another added little detail that just makes it fun. So grab some cheesecloth um, I'm going to just use the whole thing, since I'm going to use my glue gun to put down the button, 
I'm just going to use the whole thing with my glue gun. Like that. And like that. And that is just fun, isn't it? It's just a nice addition. So now we're on the last part. What we're going to be doing next when we get together is working on the fabric cover. So we'll see you soon.